Before I start the review of this Martin Logan Dynamo 400, I want to give a shout out and a fond farewell to these Vizio batteries. See these Vizio batteries? They're from this Vizio remote. And this remote and this TV I bought in 2015. And I never had to change the batteries. They're the Vizio batteries from the Vizio TV, the Vizio basement. So this is my TV back in my old apartment. And whenever I was, I'm down here and I'm doing next track, last track, I'm using this remote. And I was just navigating, literally just, it was working. And then it stopped. And I went on Evangelion Decisive Battle and I'm like, did what happened? Did the Fleerk stop working? The batteries died. I changed the batteries. That's, I'm going to bury these. I have never had such good luck with batteries in a remote. Six fucking years. No, wait, almost seven. It's 2022. Anyway, let's get on to the decisive battle. Lowering the Klipsch RF7s, leaving just this. Um, actually, it's ironic, you know? This is this is a whole, this is a blast in the past episode, now that I'm thinking about it. You can hear it's just doing, it's like, because, I bought this sub. No one sent it to me. No company was like, hey, you want to review the Martin Logan Dynamo 400? No, 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 no. Because, and I'm guessing, but there's a Martin Logan Dynamo 300, and there's a Martin Logan Dynamo 300. The 8 inch sub that went on the base of the Doom Stacks. If you don't know, these speaker stands I built using Masumi aluminum and some racquetballs and some um, cutting boards and some foam and I put it together and I put my speakers on it and they used to wire it into my home theater. And the, the point of the Doom Stacks was I had an eight inch self-powered sub at the bottom, which I could wire speaker wire in and then up to a regular passive speaker or using a powered monitor, I could split off and go signal and signal and I would have low end. And the thing about the Dynamo 300s was there was something wrong with them. I think Martin Logan figured out that there's a chance that the power supplies would fail and they went, oh fuck. And they started selling them cheap. I got the first one for like $99 and the second one for $130 in 2014 and 2015. Before I moved out, I'm like, before I moved out of New York and my grandparents' place, I bought one of these subs. I'm like, I gotta try it. I gotta try Martin Logan sub. Do it. I had no money. It was an eight inch sub. It was a hundred bucks. I'm like, I gotta do it. And I fucking loved it. And when I moved to Philly, I bought another one because it was like $130. And that was all I recommended. If you knew me back in 2014, 15, 16, all I recommended was Dynamo 300 subwoofers. They're amazing. They're fucking amazing. They're an eight inch with a big port. So that only lasted two years or so. And then they just vanished. They had bad power supplies, bad things going on. I never had one fail. I never knew anyone who had one fail. Everyone who got it loved it. And they should not have been that cheap. If you look at the list price for them, they, they cost. So, step forward to 2021, because I bought this last year. And out of nowhere, on my Amazon results page, it's like, hey, Dynamo 400. And I went, what? $400. Still an 8-inch. Still self-powered, $400. And I went, fuck. Uh, buy now, okay. Because I need to know. I gotta know. Favorite sub, like, what's my favorite sub? Rhythmic, the rhythmic that's in my surround sound right there. The, love that fucking sub. But, as many times as I recommend that, not everyone buys it, but everyone bought this Martin Logan. And I love this Martin Logan. And they fucking filled it. Whatever speakers I put up there all of a sudden became whole because they had those eight inch down firing. So I had to know, I had to blow $400 on this to find out, which by the way, right now at this moment, $500. It's a tough sell at 500, at 400, do. Now here's the thing, how do I discuss this first? We'll flip it over in a second. In fact, you'll go to the timestamps, see when I flip it over. Um, so yeah, I went six years, Seven, Jesus Christ, 2022 to 2014 is, fuck, how, wait, 2015 to 2020 would be five years, six years, seven years, eight years, Jesus Christ, eight years ago and seven years ago I bought those, 
and the batteries lasted this seven years. It's just, my heart. Um, I bought it, unboxed it, and I broke it in. Because if you read the manual, which by the way, the power plug that comes with it is only a two, pl two pin, two prong. And it comes with a two prong end. And I'm like, fuck that. I spent too much money on this. It's getting the baller, high end, stupid power plug that plugs into a triple T adapter because I don't give a shit. But it's got to look cool. So the book says 50 hours is recommended before doing any critical listening or judgment. So I literally burned in this subwoofer. How did I do that? I had the Shandling uh, EM5 portable entire you know music station and I just had it to go and it bump 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 and I literally locked it in my kitchen and went out for the weekend and went to sleep with it and it was just rattling my house and it did a remarkable job of filling my entire upstairs space with low end not enough and eight inches it's not a miracle worker right I'm not going to come here and say this is better than any sunfire if, if it was it'd be like 13 to 1500 dollars but for what I've listened to it Filling in the gaps for stereo, very small home theaters. If you're a very tiny, teeny, weeny home theater in like a, how do I do this, a metric? Let's say a 12 by 15 room feet and in, in um, Euro units, uh, four by five meter room. Perfect. Perfect. Just to, just to give you that little bit of the ball tingle. Now, we should talk a little bit about how it looks because one of the things about that dynamo 300 was that it was a small little cube and it used the black ash like fake wood uh, texture on it and i eventually like they were so cheap i just drilled into the top of them to mount the, the doom stacks on it this is a cube slightly larger than that cube and now it's just the standard matte texture but it's striking to look at and it, it, it like didn't dawn on me what the fuck like it's just a black box but that's the thing, it's a box. Well, if you look at like, even the edge, yeah, these are, these are pretty sharp too. But most edges of boxes are like slightly rounded. Like here on these boo carts. They're just like someone sanded the edge. This is a sharp corner. And it actually like makes you kind of uneasy looking at it. it reminds you of something like 2001 A Space Odyssey. Because you get these like very weird, like, it's it's shiny in a way that it reflects but it's also dull so it absorbs light so it kind of looks like alien in every environment and it's just a fucking cube so bravo on martin logan doing cheaper materials on the outside but yet somehow it like i feel like it's an art piece i'm gonna wander around it see where the reflections lie it also means if it has those sharp corners anyone who's ever had a speaker that's you know covered in vinyl is going to know that if something falls and hits this, it's going to ding it and you're going to see it for the rest of eternity. So don't damage the corners and don't damage the edges or you'll see it forever. I've been super fucking careful with it. Like, mm, like touch it, grab it with a pillow. Um, the Martin Logan logo on that was a circle with the logo. Here it's just a lump of chrome. I don't even know what the hell that is. It looks like someone just drizzled, whatever, Martin, Martin Logan. Put on another song. Let me shuffle around. So now I've got the way I've got this hooked up is the IFI uh, Neo IDSD is literally here just to be the DAC for that sub. So I split the fiber, I split the coaxial digital to be fiber optic and coaxial. I've got a JDS Labs Element DAC or Element 2 DAC, I'm not sure. And then I've got the Rebel Lamp acting as a preamp to the vintage Morantz monoblocks, which so I can raise this volume and... Why the R7 Zeos? Well, my friend wanted to hear them. So he dragged them out. I'm like, I'm not moving those, like, I'll move them. So he moved them out, we hooked them up. Put the Class A preamp on, on a decent DAC and we run through and beautiful. Uh, the reason I left them here is two reasons. I believe pasta maybe move these out of the kitchen. Look how look how beautiful these are. By the way, uh, links to the 12 inch glass Lazy Susans that uh, hold all my current anime figures. I'm gonna work out a way to put them someplace and make them spin. It's gonna happen. I'm gonna have just spin and waifus like a DJ. Um, the reason I left it is because that's an... Wait, is that a 10? 
Oh fuck, those are tens. That's right. These are not little pussy eights. Those are little pussy eights. These JBLs. So these are actually larger drivers. Four of them larger drivers than what this is using. But you know what? It still adds low end to this setup. Now it's not in the opposite, obviously not in the perfect position. I would have to do the sub crawl, which I think I did in this area. If I put the subwoofer here, if you don't know what the sub crawl is, I'll say this every time I do a sub review because someone new is watching. Hello, hello, new person who's never been here before. This is your first Z review. I'm Zios and I don't live in my mother's basement. Bitch, I own this house. This is my basement. When I move my mother in, then it'll be my mother's basement. Anyway, the sub crawl is when you put the subwoofer physically where your head's going to be. Whether you have to put a table and then like stack a box or put a subwoofer where your head's going to be, where you're going to be sitting comfortably. And then you crawl around on the floor, bobbing up and down, listening for where that subwoofer, which is playing, sounds the best. And then you reverse the spaces. It's real easy. It makes you, no, it's actually, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. It's not fucking easy. Try doing that with a 130 pound 15 inch, which is the reason it's still up on there because I had to lift it up, put it in the head position, then do this a bunch and try to hear where the bass sounded the smoothest, the most correct, the least boomy, and then you put the subwoofer in that spot. And I think I did that for this area, and I'm pretty sure that spot is like over there. But I don't think I could conduct a review with it like over there in that bottom down there. So we're gonna live with it where it is. And I can still, hear this sub and feel its presence with four tens running right now so let's put the sub back up we got some so how do you say this word how do you say sushi actually you know what everything's old i realized i went to the folder for all my wallpapers obviously it's a folder just massive folder and i went to like the very oldest wallpapers that i either haven't used or i used previously but didn't sort them and yoko is there i'm like you know what this, her rifle, this makes sense. Old school, we're bringing it all back. So, Tsuki, Tsuchi. Let me put another track on. All right, let's put up speakers. There ain't no low in there. There ain't no low in there. That no low end. All right. We're feeling that low end, right? Turn this up. So now what I could do is I could either shut up the speakers and listen to just a sub, which never sounds good. I just want to say this, no matter how much you spend on a subwoofer, how many thousands of dollars, how well you've tuned it, having just a subwoofer play and no speakers always sounds like ass. And it's kind of all annoying for me as a reviewer because I want to be like, I want to just hear the thing I'm reviewing, but you can't do it. Maybe on like a big like 0.1 sub, if you want to do just a low end scene from like Ed Edge of Tomorrow, you can get the just the shaking and it's like, oh, it's impressive. But if you're trying to integrate a sub into music, that's not gonna sound like it's doing anything. It's kind of like when you disconnect the binding posts on a uh, bi-ampable bi speaker, and you listen to just the tweeters. You ever listen to just the tweeters on like a fucking giant set of clips? They sound like shit. It's like, why would I wanna listen to that? And then you add the tens back and it's like, oh, now it all makes cohesive sense. A subwoofer, when you're listening to it, really only makes cohesive sense when it's part of a system. So if you put a sub, when you're doing the sub crawl, you just, you put on a bassy tone, a repetitive, moderate bassy tone of song you know, something you understand, something you've heard a million times, and you set that on repeat and you just, you crawl around. When you're doing actual listening, if you're doing testing like I'm doing, I can't just turn the sub on and sit here and be like, Blah. It sounds like it's farting, and it's not farting, it's shaking the table a little bit because it's just an Ikea table. But it's like, well, that doesn't sound impressive at all until you add it in and you balance everything out. Now it's like, oh, I can't live without that because if I mute this, it's not like there's a hole in the song. It sounds like there's a hole in the song. One of the problems and one of the things I complain about, I love self-powered speakers. For example, Swan M300 Mark IIs can't link them because they're not on Amazon until February. 
Um, but they do miraculous things because they're self-powered. There's three drivers, and that six-inch knows what volume you have things set to from the digital signal processing. And if you have it real low, it adds a low onto it to keep it full at low volume. The problem with speakers like this, which pass with speakers like this, especially if you're not running them by amp, is if you're running it low and you're just you're just sort of chilling, you're just you're just chilling down here at the bottom. There really isn't enough energy. There's not enough wattage physically going to the speaker to make those tens keep up. Things don't balance right. A self-powered speaker knows where you have the volume set because it's digital. But a passive speaker, everything sort of like settles and there's a perfect volume where everything goes up. Not a lot of people know that. When you're testing a speaker, you can't test it too quietly and you can't test it too loudly. Another clip issue is the clip of uh, heresies, the heresy fours. You turn those up loud, all of a sudden the horns just go and they exceed their expectations. Oh my God, there's a, there's a balance. So with a subwoofer, you now have control of the low end, separate from the speaker and its own fa faults. So if you wanna play quietly and you have a sub and you have, um, obviously you don't need to use this fucking insane setup with two DACs. I just did that because I'm Zeus. You can go in the back and literally adjust it and be like, I want a little more. I play usually at this volume, so I want a little more sub when I'm doing things. There's nothing wrong with that. Just don't be one of those people whose Honda trunks bounce around. I hate you. I hate you, Honda trunk people. I hate you. It's filling that hole. Oh, oh. We're filling in that hole, boys. Genesis. No. Wait. There. Perfect. Now, I have literally two volume controls that I need to manipulate. I gotta put the speakers up and I gotta put the sub up. In your system, you wouldn't do this. Oh, we gotta talk about connectivity and everything. So let's flip this over. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, fixing my pants. Um, I noticed this thing collects a lot of fingerprints too, and I cleaned it with rubbing alcohol before this review, but now I'm gonna I'm gonna touch it again, so let's flip it over. Which way is it way? I'm gonna flip it this way. Okay, on its side. On this, this is a yoga mat, so I'm not gonna damage the corners. Oh, there it is. So, different corner blocks, by the way. Much more open, a little bit taller. A slot port instead of a round port, like on the Dynamo 300. The Dynamo 300 had a port here, and the subwoofer was actually offset. This is dead center. I lied. This is offset by only about a quarter inch this way. It uses a inverted surround so that there's less excursion outward. They don't have to sink the, the driver in. And if it moves, only the center dust uh, cone moves. It doesn't have anything like extra. So it's a good move on their part. And the slot port means you don't get chuffing. Of course, there's more volume of air. It, it changes the shape of the air. Instead of it going poof, poof, it's... You get it, okay, you get it. So let's leave it upside down, because this is a question people are gonna ask, or people have asked. Zeos doesn't matter, by the way, hand warmer. Zeos, link a muddy hand warmer. I can't believe no one invented this like 20 years ago and batteries were around. It's just, it just it gets hot. I wish it was a better shape, but it's nice. Um, actually, you could see my hand prints here. Go away. I forgot where I was going to say. Let's just turn it on. Oh, the uh, orientation of subwoofers. Does down firing versus side firing versus back firing versus front firing matter? <sighs> I think sometimes it does. Most people will tell you no. The problem comes at around 75 to 80 hertz. Anything below that, you shouldn't be able to tell uh, where your sub is in the room. It should just disappear. But you get past 80 hertz, and all of a sudden you can sort of hear where it's coming from. And when it does that, you, you sort of like, then a front firing becomes blatant. A down firing, like this is, a little less blatant, because it's just, it's spreading out between the four feet in all directions. So now... I'm gonna lower the speakers. Come on, one more. That is a very tight, you know what? I don't even know the power on this. Does it say in the manual? 
because I guarantee you it's not much. If it's 125 watts, it's a lot. But 125 watts with the correct, by the way, this is a manual is beautifully laid out. It's like people who speak English wrote it. Um, using line levels, we gotta get to the back. We'll get to the back, setting up in a home theater. I love how Martin Logan legitimately, like they try to walk you through in a concise method how to set things up. So, but for positioning, asking your dealer, which we don't talk about dealers here. Uh, home theater checks, okay, here we go. So it weighs 28 and a half pounds. That's not that bad. Not a lot, but not bad. The feet are rubber, apparently. It typically draws 20 watts from the wall, 90 watts max, four watts idle, and a half a watt in standby, which it'll automatically switch to. It claims it'll do down to 30 hertz. As an eight inch, that's not bad. That isn't much lower than what these can do. These things can do, you know what? I don't know what the RF7s can do, but they can go down pretty low. But it's again, they're going down low and they're only going down for based on what your volume is set to. If you want more bass out of that, you're either EQing everything, by amping them and powering that separately and having a separate control, which will screw up your mid range because this is also doing mid range. It isn't just, you know, that isn't just, oh, bass and this is everything else. This is an entire speaker. That's another, people think, I tell people towers are a whole complete package all the way as low as you need to go. But, Unless they're like, excuse me, girls. Uh, unless they're like this, where this entire section is speaker and that's all low end, then you're dealing with speaker, all speaker. So adding a sub will always benefit even towers, even those towers. Where was I? I was looking for a thing. Anacoic and LFE mode, it'll do 30 to 200 Hertz. We'll never want to go up to 200. Eight inch high excursion, inverted surround polypropylene cone in a stamped steel basket with extended throw driver assembly ported. Amplifier, 75 watts, 150 watts peak. You know why I like that? Because it's not lying to you. It's not a pile, P-Y-L-E. You ever look up that brand for audio? Fucking don't. Because I guarantee you, if Pile put out a subwoofer, an 8-inch subwoofer, they would claim it's got 750 watts. 750 watts! Peak 1,550 watts! And you know what? It'd be garbage power. If you're going to put 75 watts in a subwoofer, and it's going to sound this good, you're putting a real good 75 watts. Changing tracks. See what we got. Richard Cheese. Postmodern Jukebox. Michael Jackson, I just put on 2000 watts for Michael Jackson. There he is. Um, I actually gotta lower this, because it's probably gonna explode. All right, here. Oh, I will, I'll, wait, wait, wait. Probably sounds like ass on the, sub, on the uh, camera, but let's turn this thing. Oof. Ugh, on its face. So we can look at its ass. Here. This is... I should probably move this. Do not knock over the girls. Do not knock over the girls. They're precariously not on their bases, just sort of sitting on glass. So. Michael Jackson. Um... All right, put this up. Again, orientation shouldn't matter, and this is not the best location because the sub crawl said that's the best location, but get it till it sounds like this thing is about to explode, and let's match it with the speakers. That's, uh, that's what you, I, it's why you buy subs. Anyone, who, here's the thing, there's, two type of subwoofer users. There's subwoofer users who understand, like me, and they just bring the subwoofer up just to lift the, the, the sound, just that extra five or six percent. It's like, ah, oh. and there's assholes. And if you're an asshole, you know you're an asshole. Because, and I'm not calling you an asshole. Your neighbors are calling you assholes. Because you've got a stack of 15, su 15 inch subs in both corners. And you just, you just want bass. You want 38% of your music to be bass. And that's preference. Some people like 
chubby girls and some people like skinny girls. Um, you're obviously a chubby base freak. And I'm more like a skinny, just just a delicate, like cool whip. Cool whip on the nipples, sort of. That's that's my thing. You wanna pour fucking fudge on some you know back alley skank? You do that. Um hi, welcome to Z Reviews for you new people. Remember how I said you new people? Uh all right, so here's the back. Interesting world's best cables, but they're brand new, so they're a little bit stiff. We have got RCAs in the bottom. Uh, left in and right in slash LFE in. So if you only have one input, if you're using a surround receiver, you go boop, plug it into LFE in, everything's set and done. You have a power mode switch, which has auto or on. No off. There's no off on this subwoofer. And usually if there's an auto and an on, then there's a master power switch somewhere for off. There's no off. It can't go off. Too bad. You get a status light, which when it blinks, you have an error or a clip issue. If it's uh, solid uh, white, like it is, it's on and running. If it goes red, it's in standby. You get a phase switch. If you don't know what a phase switch does, essentially, actually, I probably should switch this up since it's in a, such a weird position. When, when the computer makes the music sound go, and it's like bass, normal speaker goes out and then in. You flip that switch, it goes in and then out. And that's a timing thing. Sound is an instant. Sound has a speed it travels. And if you have a phase knob, you can adjust just a timing. Instead of it being out and in, it's out or delay it and out and delay it and out until you get all the way to 180. And then when it's going out, it's actually when it should have gone in and that's backwards. So that would be placement in the room when you do the sub crawl, you would also then put it in the right position and flip this phase. If you only have a switch, it's either gonna sound better in one way or the other. Something I can't tell you, you have to listen for it. But if you have a knob, that's a little more complicated. That's why I like the SVS ones with the app, because you can literally adjust shit sitting in the listening position. Otherwise, you gotta have a helper monkey. You gotta have that fudge covered girl come in and adjust it, or guy. I'm not judging. Whoever you have covered in fudge comes in and he like, L -l -l more face, more face, more face, M less frequency response, a little higher. You have to have them go back and twist everything. So basically, we actually, I want to hear it with the uh, Foo Fighters in your honor. That's not a good bass song. Give me a good bass song. Give me a good bass song. Arnie Dominus. That would definitely not be, ooh, Dirty Vegas. Where's Days Go By non acoustic? Skipping forward. There we go. Okay. I want to do the break dance thing. That actually sounds like it's integrated a little better. Because if they're if the phase is wrong, shit will crash. Like one if that's going whoa and this is going whoa and they're not on in sync, then you're getting one whoop before the other. But if that goes whoa and that goes whoa, then they, they sort of balance out by the time it gets to you. It's it's complicated science shit. Just flip the switch and tell me if it sounds better. Um low pass, 35 hertz is as low as it'll go. We're not quite there, we're at about 40. 40, 45. There's no labels. Um, you go all the way to 120, which is at three o'clock. And then if you go past that, you bypass. And what bypass does is it means that now this eight inch speaker, which should only be a subwoofer, is now a speaker. That's copyright infringement. I'm gonna get it for that. So bypass 120. I put it down to 35, it's not even doing anything because there's nothing at 35 hertz in this song. We have to go and keep searching, get some Run the Jewels or Epic Score, Agenda, whatever the fuck that is. No, I should probably have a, like a special playlist that's just low end music. Chromatics, I just like listening to music. Berserk Arc 3, Marilyn Manson, The Beautiful People, that'll have some low shit. Where am I on this? 43 down. So there's 35 hertz. Raising it up. Now, 
you would use the uh, low pass filter to adjust to match your speakers. Guaranteed, almost no one buying this subwoofer has these in their room. Because those are like $3,600 and this is a $400 sub or $500 depending on when you buy it. And if you're going to match a sub to a speaker, you tend to want to get, you know, something equivalent. I'm using them as an example because it's such a good sub that it can be used with these, but you're not gonna. Now, that's more likely. The uh, uh, JBL Studio 580s. Hello, babies. How are you doing? Those things have two six and a halves and they get down pretty low. They probably get down into the 40s, maybe even touch 39. And then this would fill in the rest. These are going to get more. So what you do is you just start at the lowest or start at the highest and keep turning until they're not interfering with each other. The, the whole point of a subwoofer is to just get it to just put the taste that it, you know it's in the room and then you forget it's in the room and then the music is just perfect. So again, low pass filter up to your ears. Adjust. Am I playing Marilyn Manson? Put this up a little bit. Like that's probably too much because I know that's going to cover 45, 50 hertz. If you don't know what 45, 50 hertz is, you, you can literally listen to it. Just low, like 80 hertz to 100 hertz is where like you start hearing where sound is. Anything below that is considered bass. Anything below like, what's sub bass? 30 and below? So like my big ass, sub, that motherfucker there, that'll do 13 hertz. That is just vibrations. Humans can't hear it. This will not do just that. This will do higher than that. But you balance it out where you think you need to cross it over and then you listen. To bother to resist or I'll beat ya. Perfect, perfect space dandy. What is that? Of course, it's just random Japanese characters I can't read. What track is this? Track 13 from Space Dandy, Taku Takashi. Takahashi, Takahashi, okay. Whatever, track 13 sounds like this. Perfect bass track. Here. That just sounds like it's going blah, 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 blah. to me, to you, I don't know what it sounds like to you. It's like, I don't know, is that worth $500? I don't know, Zio, so it's like it's doing much until... Oh, I miss it. It's literally like, can't, with the, just the speakers, I love these speakers, obviously, gave them a great review. But at this volume, where it's just like sort of playing in the background, I kind of want a little more. And that thing on its own is like, eh, but you play them both. What a cohesive orgasm you could have. Oops. Monster Mesame. Uh, finish this. Level. Can you do you understand level? It's it's low or high. I have it maxed out. And I'm using that thing because it's easier. And then the weird thing, I've never seen this on a sub. They've got I, they're just receptacles for banana plugs. Usually it's either spring clips where you can put the wire in or five-way binding posts where you can install a banana plug or raw wire. This is telling you to go fuck yourself. Just banana plugs. Just banana, just banana plugs. You need banana, just banana plugs. Just banana plugs. And they have a, it was just banana, it was just uh, spring clips on the 300s, which here's my issue with subwoofers that do this. It has four holes left and right positive and left and right negative input only input i wish it had eight holes because then it would make way more sense because what you could do if it had eight holes is take speaker wires from amps plug it in and then have another set of holes speaker wires out to speakers and you're good Probably the best way to, honestly, my favorite way to implement a, a subwoofer in a 2.1 is what I just described. Unless you're doing some weird shit with a mini DSP. We're not getting into that here. But when you only have four holes, when you only have speaker inputs, what the fuck are you supposed to do? 
Because, okay, I've got this setup. You've got this setup. Let's just say your setup is monoblock, Marantz, you know, vintage amps and RF7s, and you want to integrate a subwoofer into it. I'm Zeos. I have a fucking table. Well, actually, it's a daybed filled with wires and connectors and adapters and these things that, like, actually, I'm going to borrow this for a second. Be right back. Hello, ladies. I got shit like this that exists in my house. I've got everything. And I still have to do this fucking madness workaround to get this to review. Because, yeah, yeah, look, look, there's, there's a banana, and there's a banana. By the way, it's an RCA, ignore that. Let's just be using, but you can't integrate this easily with speaker wire. You, this would be more for, the only time a speaker wire input makes sense to me is if you have an old school, surround receiver processor or a stereo receiver that has a channel and b channel and your a channel goes to your speakers and your b channel goes to your sub that's it that's the only time having only four is useful i wish to christ that if they came with splitters like if it had like this and then you could plug in a speaker wire in and out because all this needs to do because this is another thing people get confused about subwoofers when they get the speaker wires touching them don't take any power they just taste what's going on and amplify themselves. So you'd run from your Marantz monoblock, would run to this. You could just build a wire that plugs in and out and then over to your speaker. And it just tastes what's going on and then amplifies itself. Doesn't take anything away. Why only four? I want to know, like legitimately, Martin Logan, why only four? All they need to do is put one next to it and just have it connect, just be a pass through. Because especially now that you're fucking forcing everyone to use bananas, because before it was like a speaker wire, so you could what you could literally do, get nice speaker wire like this, oh these beautiful banana plugs over from the amp to the speaker. You can get the shittiest 20 gauge raw wire, wire it in parallel with your amplifier, bring it over to your sub wherever it is, wire it into your sub with the spring clips, and it would get everything it needed. It would just, you know, okay, here's my left, here's my right, I'm doing my thing. It was happy. Now you gotta get fucking bananas in there, which means you're gonna have to get good wire. To, Cause you know, this sort of shit doesn't just, you have to build them or buy them. I don't know, it's weird. It annoys me. I wish there was a full set of ins and outs. It's only ins. Most of you probably won't use that. And please don't message me and ask me how, because holy fuck. Because then you'd have to get an amplifier, use raw wire, into the five-way binding post, then plug the banana into that to run the banana into that, and then use the raw wire out to the speak. It's, it's a good sub, by the way. I'm yelling, I'm yelling, I yell sub things. I haven't done a sub for in a while. I did, what, that fluid one, and that's a special one for like s powered monitors for actual like r work with the pedal that turns it on and off, and it was decent and interesting. This is a better sub. This shit is, when Vanatu, remember Vanatu? Link to the Vanatu T1 Encores in the description, Zios. When Vanatu T1 Encores hit the market years ago, 2016, 2017, the new Encores came out, and they had a subwoofer out, they legitimately recommended the Martin Logan Dynamo 300. So that was a $600 set of speakers. DSP corrected to the ass, just to the nine, to the ass nine, to, the a to be asinine. And they were recommending this $130 sub because it was the best sub for it. And I guarantee you, this would be the best sub for them now. It's just tight and precise and big. It sounds, for 75 watts, 150 watts peak, it sounds bigger than it is. It's a bigger box than the old one. And I think they're using that for the slot port, for maybe a bigger amplifier. They're getting over, they're getting over with it. Well, I'm going to put this down. Uh, fuck it, it sounds good like this. I'm not turning that again. Hit next track. Bear McCreary, Bloodshed, from Battlestar Galactica Season 1. That was it, we got like one like boom. All you need is that one boom. All you need is that one boom in a song and you realize you made a good purchase. I don't know why it does, but it does it. And, and these are RF7s. If I, if I take this away and do that again, which can I go back? Please somebody can go back. Yeah, it's not as much. It's, 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 
And it's not like the RF7s are like, oh, those are small speakers, Zeos. Gee, Zeos, they're such small little baby speakers. No, no, no. A subwoofer is always needed. Always needed. I hate telling people that because they think if they spend enough money on towers, they don't need a subwoofer. But a subwoofer is self-powered and adjusted separately. And it can make a world of difference. It makes the world of difference. Anyway, I'm done. I spent my hard-earned money on $400 in the sub. And you know what? It's never going away. I was going to burn the box. I got it. I broke it in. I listened to it like 20 minutes. I'm like, I'll just burn the box. I'm not going, this isn't going nowhere. As long as it doesn't explode, it's not going anywhere. <sighs> Do you need a subwoofer with every speaker? Yes. Does it have to be this particular one? No. Any subwoofer will be better than no subwoofer. I don't like Polk subwoofers. The cheap ones are sort of meh. They used to be the Bic subwoofers. Dayton, I'm not even sure if they still make decent ones. But those Martin Logans, those 300s, still to this moment, if I hook those up and I have them wired to work, if I hook those up and integrate them into a system, world of difference. I'm not probably going to buy another one of these and do another Doom Stack or just take that Doom Stack off and put it on. Not doing that. But if you wanted to. Oh, God, I hit iHeartRadio. I didn't mean to do that. No one wants to see that shit. Close that app. I don't want to go to iHeartRadio. That's dumb. You're stop being dumb. When you were here before. <sighs> Just. Switch. They're like, there's like a very gentle. Bum, bum. And I want to know if it's the sub I was just hearing. When you were here before. It's not there now. It's amazing. It's amazing. What it Here's the weirdest part. Subwoofers make sense if you're a quiet listener. Oh, I don't need a subwoofer, Zeo, so I play my music quietly. That's when you need it, motherfucker. When you play your shit loudly, you probably can't tell what's here. Hold on, we'll um, we'll back this up. That's low. Let's put this to, oh God. When you have it up loud, the vum vum is there because we're using RF7s on vintage Japanese monoblocks. You get it. It's still, well, I still want to put the sub on. More Bear McCreary. I just want to listen to music on stream. <laughs> I'm gonna die. That's so fucking loud. Holy God. That is Yoko Kano Chicken Bone from the Cowboy Bebop OST3. Let's integrate some subwoofer into this. At like negative 10 dB there. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to get copyright on that. We'll lower this. All these speaker reviews, by the way, I have no. Everything gets copyright matched when I played 10 seconds of music. So thank you to supporters of this channel. I'm, uh, I was going to say Facebook. That's weird. On Subscribestar and Patreon. It just knocks perfectly. And now it sounds perfect again. Yeah. So, Martin Logan, big thumbs up. Well, big thumbs up, but it's slightly bent. Because I would just love to see those speaker level ends be matched. I'd also like a phase knob. But I'm asking for a lot. I don't, all right, I will accept the way this is currently. If you drop that price to 200 bucks. Doesn't have to be back to like the 100, 130, that the 300s, where I know those were like a fucking fluke. And I know they were, because literally everything else in that line, the Dynamo 500, the Dynamo 700, were like 700, $900. They were ridiculously expensive. There was no way the 300 was supposed to be 130 bucks. No way. This is what the Dynamo 300 was supposed to cost. And they just couldn't sell it. So now this, working, no problems. They're like, fuck it. We're sending it, brah. And uh, I, I, I was a sucker that bought one, and I couldn't be happier. So that's the end of this video. Ennio Morricone. <sighs> I remember to tell you how much I love the Die Hard soundtrack, but not the fourth or fifth one. Those movies are not, don't exist. Anyway, links to this, links to RF7s, links to the IFI Neo IDSD for no fucking reason. I'd like to link to the Marantz monoblocks, but 
good luck finding uh, your MA700s. Yeah, these are MA700s, and they're upgraded with detachable power cords and everything. So they're super fucking rare. I hope this comes down in price. And I think most people who have heard this review will kind of be like, oh, you know what, Zios, you're right. You're right. I don't, it's not a huge sub. I worry about its damage potential for just its sharp edges, but it's gonna fucking fill almost any medium sized room. Certainly a small room would get pummeled by it. Uh, <sighs> make your life better, get a subwoofer. I'm done. Patreon subscribe so I see reviews early. Uh, participate in yard sales. This will not be in a yard sale. Nor will the other Martin Logans. I have three Martin Logan subwoofers now in this space. I gotta bring this somewhere where I can use it more. Anyway, that, that, that. Get to the uh, loss of sound demos and previous sound demos. Uh, for $10 a month on either subscribe to our Patreon, you get into the private behind the scenes Telegram chat where you could ask me any questions you'd like. You also get into a private swap meet channel once you're in there so you can buy and trade gear. And check out Hi-Fi Guides in the Hi-Fi Guides forum. And that's this review. It was very rambling, but I have so much to talk. I love subwoofers and home theater almost more than just music, just like old stereo music. And I like I like the complications that subwoofers add because when you get them right, it's so fucking rewarding. Like you could like I could position speakers all fucking day, but if you get a subwoofer position that right, whole world changes. Anyway. I'm done. Down that wallpaper in the description also. Uh, thank you for uh, sticking with me in 2022. Why is it... Did the shadow just cause it to dim? I might have local dimming on. And I will see you all in the next one. When these girls will have their own, like... It's going to be great. It's going to be like eight of them. It's, it's going to be wild. It's like a tree. It's going to be like a tree with them on it.